Hey guys, recently someone forwarded me an email to an article from the Government Accountability Office. And this article, it talked about the impacts of the avian influenza. So stick with me as I talk about some of the highlights from that article. Thanks again for watching another edition of today's science lesson. And as I mentioned, this government article talked about bird flu. So bird flu is a little bit of a misnomer. Birds are the natural carriers for all versions of the flu. But specifically, when people mention bird flu, they're talking about H5N1. So this version of the flu doesn't really affect humans that often, not directly. So since 1997, the World Health Organization has estimated that there's been about 2,100 bird flu infections and about 800 deaths from this disease. So the bird flu isn't a, doesn't affect humans directly as much as say something like the human influenza virus. So the human influenza virus also comes from a strain of flu that's found in birds. So that makes the flu a zoonotic disease or disease that originates in animals and primarily affects animals but can actually cause disease in humans if given the opportunity. So that plays in a little bit with uh, the evolutionary traits of viral particles, but that's another lesson for another day. So the USDA has actually done a, uh, looked at the numbers, they've done a study, and over about a six month period, they looked at the data across the states. So from December, 2014 to about July 2015, there's been an estimated 50 million uh, birds have had to be killed or they say depopulated or euthanized uh, in order to reduce uh, the spread of infections of the bird flu. So bird flu primarily affects birds. So our food supply, so chickens and turkeys, are primarily most at risk for a couple different reasons. So animals have to be slaughtered to reduce the chances of infection to the rest of the population of animals. So in U.S. manufacturing, we know that birds tend to be kept in tightly enclosed locations and a lot of birds in one area. So even the free range in quotation birds, they have only free range for a limited amount of time or that's free range within an indoor artificial location, a controlled environment. So the preventative measures actually are all voluntary, the ones that the U.S. government gives. So that's one of the hurdles to minimizing how the bird flu actually spreads among avian populations. So the USDA had identified 15 areas where they've learned lessons in how to deal with outbreaks. And so among those, they estimate they have about 308 specific measures that they can actually implement. So they've said that they've completed about 70% of those measures. However, the Government Accountability Office has noted that there's no way in measuring yet whether or not the implementation of those measures are effective yet. And so reevaluating situations, that's kind of what the Government Accountability Office does. And that's specifically, that's what they did in this case as well. They looked at the efforts and they decided if something else, additional measures need to be taken. And they did. They found out that they need to actually evaluate the effectiveness of these measures. So if you think of about this time two years ago, the egg shortage actually came into the news because Whataburger, which is known for being 24 hours, had to reduce their hours for their breakfast times because of the egg shortage. McDonald's also, it was reported that they had to 
find some new egg suppliers. So dealing with the potential vulnerability of the food supply chain is considered an area of, in quotations, biosecurity. So even though these measures, there are measures to reduce the spread of diseases within a population in the food chain, not all of them are mandatory and they're cost associated. For instance, one of the measures the USCA highlighted and it was highlighted in the government accountability report was how the, a lack of sufficient skilled workers to cull the population in high risk populations. So once the disease has, uh, has had an outbreak, they need to reduce or kill off some of those birds and they need skilled workers. If the workers aren't that skilled or they do not have enough skilled workers, this can actually increase the amount of time necessary to complete the task, ultimately leading to more birds that potentially have to be killed. Another potential impact of this outbreak is that vaccines for the flu for humans are actually made with eggs. So if we're having a shortage of eggs, that could potentially affect our vaccination attempts against the human strains of the influenza virus. So you can check out the rest of this article. It was actually published last month. You can check it out on the Government Accountability's website. So I hope you learned something. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about that article. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.